My name is Angowri Rice and I play Katie Heron in Mean Girls. I'm a huge fan of the original Mean Girls movie. I actually had it on DVD growing up and it was one of the only, like we had maybe three or four DVDs and that was one of them. And my sister and I, we had this little portable DVD player so when our parents would, you know, go to work, we'd sit in the corner and, and watch Mean Girls on this DVD player. So um, some of my earliest memories <laughs> are of watching Mean Girls just over and over and over again. And when you watch something that many times when you're that age, it just gets stuck. I think the key thing that has made Mean Girls so iconic and so timeless is Tina Fey's writing. She consciously made an effort to make up slang in the movie so it doesn't feel dated. That's what Fetch is. It's, it belongs in its own world. So each time you watch the movie, it's not going to feel dated because Fetch is just part of Mean Girls and we all understand that. I loved working with Tina. She's incredible. She is so witty and so clever. And one of my favorite parts about working with her is that she was on set and she would give us alt lines to say just before, just before we went for a take, which was so fun because to sort of have that spontaneity of a new joke that you would just say and sort of see how people react. Um, so I loved that that freedom in comedy that she had and she was always thinking of new jokes, new ways to um, make the scene funnier or more interesting or different. So I love that creative passion and energy that she has. Yeah, one of the biggest changes from the 2004 film is that now in 2024 we have social media and that is one of the biggest differences between these two the, the two ways in which we tell this story. Social media has a huge influence on the politics of high school and how um, the popular girls operate, how the bullies operate. It's, it's so new. Um, so that is an element that has been worked into our movie in a really interesting and fun way, I think. My involvement with Mean Girls began with an email from Tina Fey which was the most exciting thing to receive. I could not believe it. I, I, I couldn't believe that it showed up in my inbox. And it was her talking about the movie and um, saying she thought I would be a good fit for Katie Heron. Um, and I was so flattered and so excited by that. And so that's where it began. I love working with Renee. She plays Regina. Um, Katie and Regina have so many great scenes together. So I, I had a lot of opportunity to really get to know Renee and get to know her as a person, but also as a creative, as an actor, as a musician. So it was so fun working with her. She, um, she brings a lot of laughter to set, that's for sure. <laughs> I think the plastics are so interesting because in the film, in the 2004 film and, and in the story of Mean Girls, they are sort of the villains. That's who they're set up to be. And then in pop culture, they become these incredible icons and people are dressing up like them for Halloween. And, you know, they're the ones that you look to for fashion inspiration. Um, so I think it's really interesting that we've remembered them in this way and that, you know, they are the mean girls of <laughs> mean girls. But each of the characters also has an arc. The plastics all change by the end of the film. Um, alongside Katie. I loved working with Jenna Fisher. She plays my mom, Mrs. Heron, and it was such a dream come true to work with her. She is so kind and wonderful. I've been a fan of hers for a long time, and meeting her in person, she's just got this warm, loving energy that extends to everyone in her vicinity. So I really felt like, I really felt like she was another mother on set. <laughs> Kyle is our choreographer. He is so incredible. Um, when I first met him, I was really nervous because I didn't know what sort of dancing would be required of us. Um, but he was really patient with, with teaching me all the dances. And something that I love about Kyle's choreography is that you can watch his choreography with no music and understand the story and understand what is going on. And I think 
that is the mark of a great choreographer and a great storyteller. I hope audiences enjoy the spectacle that this movie is. Art and Sam was so good about making it really visually interesting for the audience. And that's why I'm so excited that it's going to be playing in cinemas because you're going to see all the dancers' hard work. You're going to see all the costumers' hard work. You're going to see all the set decks' hard work. It's just going to be a treat for the eyes, I think. I remember walking around being like, my name is Regina George. You know, like there's a posture, there's a stance, and everyone knows the trio in pink. And so that's immediately what came to mind. And it's so fun having this adaptation one for a newer audience. Um, if it came out in two th 2004, like it's truly another generation that gets to watch this film. I played Janice and what initially um, drew me to her was because she was so very different from any character I'd played before. That's always what I'm looking for. Um, and I liked that although she's a side character, she has her own arc. So I'm excited for people to see it and I, I hope people like also my take on Janice because she's been done so beautifully before, like adding my own spin on her and adding the camp and the queerness that Sam and Art also fostered and encouraged through, through filming. Janice's partner in crime is Damien, who's played by Jacquel Spivey. He is fantastic. He is so funny. He has a real knack for physical comedy and he has such control over his voice so he's like a beautiful soul to work with and he's also really fun to watch. Renee Raff plays Regina George and I think that she's absolutely amazing. Renee has such a powerful energy on set like she really is queen bee but luckily we're on the same team and we're on the same t side so we're joking and stuff like that but as soon as she puts on the Regina I'm terrified, I'm scared, you know what I mean? Like, let me get out of your way. So <laughs> she, she's just fantastic. Tina Fey is actually so down to earth and really chill. Like, she'll just walk down the hallway and she'll be like, hi, good morning. And I'm like, good morning, Tina Fey. Like, fantastic, hi, how are you today? Um, yeah, it's been a, a joy to have her on set and to get her feedback of, of what she thinks when she writes these scenes, also some like behind the scenes of, of the first film, of why certain lines got in there. Um, yeah, it's it's been really fun to pick her brain of, of different characters and things like that. She's been a great resource. My character, Janice, I love how we've taken um, kind of a previous iteration where she was goth and had like darker makeup and now she's fully like an art freak. She doesn't care about um, conforming to rules or conforming to any of the hierarchies or groups in high school and one of the most fun aspects of her look I think is her makeup um, and I've been working with uh, George who's been just so much fun and it's a collaborative process every day of <sighs> well what are you wearing well what do you want to do should we add some sparkles you know and, and I've, I've really enjoyed just sticking rhinestones all over my face there are, are strong female leads, there are people of color. Uh, Tina and I also had a conversation, she was like, hey, why don't we change Janice's last name to reflect more of like your Hawaiian background? And I was like, great, and so we added that into the film and it's, it's these small but sure steps, I think, that make actors feel more connected to their character and also hopefully lends them to a more authentic performance that viewers will, will catch on to. My name is Avantika, and I play Karen Shetty in Mean Girls. I was a huge fan of Mean Girls. Uh, it, it was just such a massive movie for us, and fashion-wise, all the actresses went on to do such amazing things. There's a character in Mean Girls for everyone, and I think it speaks to the good in everyone and a little bit of the bad, the mean that's in everybody. And I think it embodies like the hopes and dreams of all high school girls to become this like beautiful, popular girl in school. And I, and it was just great to see it on screen. And it's pink and who doesn't love pink? Everything about it was so perfect and timeless and um, it resonated with so many generations. And I, and I think even to this day, it's still just as relevant as it was. We've updated the fashion and we've updated 
you know, the people who are in it as well. I think the cast and, and the whole environment feels a lot more inclusive. TikTok is so, so relevant today and such a massive, such a massive thing. And so I think incorporating that into how people are bullied and how people are, are coming out of bullying and using the platform to kind of reclaim the narrative is also very, very relevant in this film. Karen has always been my favorite character just because I think she's, you know, undeniably the nicest of the mean girls. Um, and she's sweet and charismatic and kind and I, I've loved her always. And so to be able to take on, I guess your favorite part from the movie is nothing short of a dream come true. I think, especially being South Asian, I think it's also really quite amazing to be able to play a character who's a little bit against the grain and a, a little bit against the stereotype that Indians or South Asians typically tend to play and so I'm very excited to also be kind of perceived I guess in a new new more updated way and, and to kind of break barriers in that sense. I'm also excited to kind of bring something new to the character and, and hopefully people can kind of look at it as a new spin on Karen. Karen to me is like a bundle of joy, a bundle of oblivious joy. And I think she has kind of gotten roped into the plastics because she's beautiful and because she, I guess, struggles to maintain a sense of individuality. And I think throughout this movie, we see her kind of perceive everything that's happening around her and perceive the bullying in a sense of being like oh what is what is going on and I think it's really interesting to see how someone who may typically be seen as like a pushover kind of grow a sense of understanding of the world around them. Most of the time when we see popular girl like the popular girl in media it feels very one-dimensional and like there's no nuance and no subtlety to the character itself, which is just simply not true. And any girl who's, you know, gone to high school and encountered a popular girl for themselves will tell you that it's hard to fully hate them. You love them a little bit and you do hate them. These girls have insecurities too and they have problems too. And oftentimes those aren't represented in media. So it was, it, it's nice to see villains be humanized a little with the advent of social media, a lot has changed. And so I think it'll be fun for audiences, at least this generation, to see themselves a little bit more clearly in this film than the original. I think they'll like the music. I think the music brings a lot to the film. Um, and I think it's what really makes this version shine. Uh, and I think it's easy to get caught up in the fact that this is not the original and that this is a new take on the characters, but I think the songs and seeing how these characters have evolved to be slightly different, I think will really make audiences um, quite happy. There's so much color, there's these wonderful songs, there's these massive sets and, you know, Brene Rapp is in it, Ali Cravalho is in it, Bibi Wood is in it, Tina Fey is in it, so many people, Ashley Park. I mean, why would you not want to see all of them in theaters? <laughs> I'd go and see this movie with my best friend um, and my mom, probably. <laughs> I feel like both of them would enjoy it and I would enjoy watching it with them. My name is Bibi Wood and I play Gretchen Wieners in the movie. <laughs> I was such a big fan of Mean Girls, such a big fan of Mean Girls growing up. I don't even remember when the first time I saw it was. I think it is just kind of like a pillar in everyone's lives. It does feel that way. I'm not sure if that's like true, but it really does feel like everyone kind of has their own relationship with that film, regardless of your age or your gender. Like, you're going to have a relationship with the film because I think it really just honestly encapsulates what being a young person is. The reason that the movie is so relevant still is because it's just so honest. Um, I think the 2004 version perfectly encapsulates the time. I think it perfectly encapsulates society and culture during that time. And I think what was so special to see, and I think integral to making the movie work today, is making it honest to 2024. I knew that Tina Fey was involved, obviously. She, she wrote the original movie and, and the book for the musical, and, and she, she obviously wrote this. And so I was really excited by that prospect because my, one of my first scene partners 
as a professional actor was Tina in 30 Rock. Um, I started acting professionally when I was 10 or 11 and I got cast in an episode of 30 Rock when I was like 10 years old and basically like my first scene partner as a professional actor was Tina. And um, it was amazing. She was like the nicest, nicest woman. I remember being this like little 10 year old that was like, she's incredible. Like if this is what acting is, if this is like, you know, if this is who actors are, like I want to be around them. I want to learn from them. I want to do this. Gretchen Wieners is sort of like the right hand, you know, figure to to Regina George, who is Queen Bee. Um, you know, it feels almost like Gretchen is kind of like her assistant. Like she knows everything. She knows what's going on, not just with Regina, but with the whole school. I think there's a little bit of everyone in Gretchen and like a little bit of Gretchen in everyone. I think like she's just so um vulnerable even if she doesn't realize it. I think they're like creative geniuses to be honest. Um, they have such incredible ideas and like to see the way their minds just work so so quickly. The moment they said this movie is like if Janice and Damien got to direct their own high school experience I was like oh my god I'm on board. Tina Fey, she's the mother. I mean, that's what we were all saying, right? Like, Renee says this a lot, but like, mother, you know? She, she was there every single day, which I think is just so admirable because, of course, she doesn't have to be, you know? But she was there every single day, and she was just ready to, to answer questions or to throw jokes out at us like oh maybe try this maybe say this you know she's so collaborative and and just so quick and so smart um I'm in total awe of her I think audiences are gonna like a lot of things I think it's hard to to choose a specific thing but it is just such a fresh take on such a beloved you know tale it's always nice to see characters that you know and you love and that you're familiar with kind of be um, resurrected in, in a way. When I saw the Mean Girls musical, I was like, Tina had said to me, she was like, you know, it'd be great if you wanted to. Maybe you could like come in as Mrs. George for a summer on Broadway. And I was like, kidding, that'd be amazing. I have said it ironically myself as a mom, like I'm not a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. Um, Tina really, I, she has a lot of things like that, that have, you know, really permeated the culture and become a part of our lexicon. Um, but that in particular is everybody knows the mom that doesn't want to be the mom that wants to still be hanging with the girls in high school. When I watched Mean Girls for the first time, I mean, wow, almost 20 years ago, uh, the original movie, I related to it as a person who was much younger, like remembering high school. Her wanting to be a part of social media and speak that language, but it's it's not hers to speak. You know, TikTok is not for a woman in her forties, as my child always says. Like, mom, you can keep your Instagram. I'll have TikTok. It was like, okay, I'm not even on it. Tina Fey is um, an icon and a trailblazer and a person that I have looked up to my entire career, as long as I can remember. These girls are so talented. I had seen Renee in Mean Girls um, on Broadway when she had taken over the part um, and had watched the TV show that she's on just sort of like in preparation for coming to work with her and was sort of just I'm floored by her natural ability. She's just incredibly gifted and uh, and it's just natural. You know, it just comes so naturally to her. And also I'm friends with Jenna Fisher forever. I've known Jenna for a million years. And when I first met and Gowrie, I texted Jenna and I was like, it's bizarre. You guys, she is a little you. It's the casting is so good. They are all this perfect sort of embodiment of characters that you know and love, but 
this is just it's a whole new imagining of it and and all of these girls are wildly talented i am um chris briney i play aaron samuels in the movie i've obviously seen the movie i've seen it a bunch of times it was a big part of my childhood, as I think it was everybody's. But I remember a lot of it. I purposefully did not rewatch it after I got cast because I didn't want to revisit or, you know, emulate. Well, it's cool to see it in a different, like, world because in 2000, the early 2000s, like, technology was at a very different point. And now it's become, like, such a part of all of our lives, like, in those 20 years. Um, and so, like, the use of, like, social media and stuff in this movie and in telling the story and in, like, the spread of information and gossip um, is really cool because it's not all just word of mouth anymore and not all just, like, phone calls and, you know, it's FaceTimes and TikTok and stuff like that. I think for me, at least, I was like, oh, that's a really interesting way of incorporating, like, technology in the modern age into a story that already exists. I think Aaron is, like, the dutiest dude of all time. Um, and I think that's why I like, uh, like playing him so much. Uh, um, like he is just such like a prop for the story, you know? Like he's there for, to be like sort of what the drama is like around, but he himself isn't really like doing anything. And I enjoy that about it. I enjoy, he, he sort of gets to sit back and watch and be a part of all the mess, but he's not really like, he's just a good kid. Art and Sam are so good. They have so much energy all the time. And I know, like, making a movie is a really stressful thing, especially when you are directing it. But they come in with so much energy every morning and every, like, note and every take and every scene. They're always, like, at a 100, which is really hard. Tina's fantastic. Um, I mean, I grew up like whether I knew it or not like consuming like so much of her like material you know SNL and Mean Girls and it's wonderful to have her like come in and give a note um like that's a really exciting sort of feeling or it has been because I'm like oh yeah like I get it I get what you're trying to say to me you know if she has a n note about what's funny I'll be like oh yeah that is funny like that's a great approach to it she's just so smart about comedy and about uh, approaching this material, and it's really fun to work with. I think I made her chuckle one time, and that's what's the highlight of this thing so, so far for me. So. I hope people appreciate it for the same reason that they appreciated, have appreciated Mean Girls in general for this long, the movie or the musical or whatever you have enjoyed. Because um, it's, you know, it's really funny, and um, it's relatable to, I think, everybody's life in one way or another. Um, it's absurd. It's um, Tina Fey. It's you know. There's there's a, a lot of good things, and there's like so many really cool, really talented young people, which is exciting to be around. You know, because I just see like them work, and I'm like, oh, you're gonna do like such big things. You're gonna do such big things. Like this is cool to be a part of. It's really cool. I am Jockwell Spivey, and I play Damian Hubbard. I was told by my team that uh, Tina Fey wants to talk to you. And I was like, oh, I love a little prank. I love a little joke. I'll go along with it. And um, I joined a Zoom call, and Tina Fey was sitting right there. Uh, and she started telling me about the project and uh, seeing if I had any interest, which I sh definitely did. Ali E, my Janice. Well, I think. Everybody has a Janice. Everybody has a Damon. It's that one person that you can confide in. The one person where you can say the most idiotic thing and they'll go along with it. You know what I mean? And I think it's such a beautiful relationship because on paper, these two probably wouldn't be friends. They're probably the most opposite. You know, he's a social butterfly. She's to herself. He wants to sing and be loud. She just wants to like crochet and draw and be her own little art freak. But it works. We, we even each other out. I just love working with Ngauri because the, she's just so open, you know? She's so open and she's so honest and just has such a beautiful spirit. And it's so Katie, you know, like the, just the energy of, I just want to be involved and I want to do great and I want us all to have fun. 
That's Anne Gowry. So for me, it's sometimes difficult to look at Katie and to not see Anne Gowry because I just want to hug them both all the time. I think the thing with Regina is everybody just thinks Regina's mean, and that's it. And that's so surface, it's like, there's a reason I'm sure this young lady has become this way. And I think Renee has done such a beautiful job at finding the layers of, yes, this is a mean girl, but as fierce as she is, she's also a little insecure. And as like dominating as she is, she's also just a little worried about her place in this school and in this, this world of popularity. And Renee just holds it down, you know, she just, she comes on the scene and it's like, you want to watch her. You want to, and in a way, there are moments where it's like you want to root for her, but you can't. Like, you want to root for Renee, but then when Regina pops up, it's like, ugh, we don't like you. We're not supposed to like you. I think what's amazing about Tina and Jeff as well, I think they're both collaborators. And it's awesome to step into a space where your voice matters and your opinions of a character matters and your point of view. Um, especially when you're talking to the creator and she's like, mm, I never thought of it that way, let's try it, versus I didn't write it to be that way, you know? It's, it's an honor to be in a space with such an amazing creative individual like Tina Fey and for her to like your idea and allow you to run with it. I think what they're gonna love about this movie is how different it is from what they thought it was gonna be. I think it's gonna be really cool. That was the thing that got everyone who's cast and just working on this project so excited is that we're not recreating anything. We're reimagining. And reimagining means we're gonna take the world of this show, we're gonna evolve it, we're gonna switch it around, we're gonna still tell the same story, but we're gonna tell it our way. A lot has changed since 2004. Uh, it's, a lot of, it's a different way of life for a high schooler and a teenager. And I think we showcase, we showcase all of that in this movie. Tina Fey wrote me an email, a lovely email, and asked if I would wanna join the cast as Ms. Heron. And you know what? When Tina Fey writes you an email, you write back, yes! I mean, what a fun project. I, of course, was a huge fan of the movie when it came out, I've seen it multiple times. And so this is super exciting for me. It's funny, when they offered me the role, I thought, wow, why did they think of me for this? You know, it's been a while since I've been on camera. I wonder, wh why did I pop in their minds? And then I Googled and Gowry, and I was like, oh, that's why. We look identical. She actually looks like a grown-up version of my daughter. It's, I could imagine my daughter growing up to look like her. So, yeah, it's very, very similar. The first day that we were shooting together, we ended up talking about soup making and bread making. I mean, we have the same sort of off-camera interests as well. So we got along great from the beginning. And she is just a phenomenal actress. She is so real. She's so emotionally available. She's so ready every take. And it's just been an absolute dream getting to work with her. The whole cast is amazing. Like the casting has been absolutely perfect on the movie. And you know, I got to do a film a long time ago with Tim Meadows. And so this is my second film that I get to do with Tim and he is so amazing. So there's just all of these sort of serendipitous things that came together in the casting of the movie that was just felt right. I think we can all relate to being a teenager. It's a time when you're trying to figure out who you are and you can be easily influenced by the people around you and anyone who exudes confidence is both attractive and terrifying. So, you know, Regina is all confidence and that is very intoxicating. And so I think we all know what it's like to be in that, that sort of adolescent time of transition. And so it becomes very relatable. I think the biggest difference is the phones and the technology and how all of that is working itself into the story. You know, this idea of you can be embarrassed by a video that's been posted or you can go viral in both good and bad ways. Like, that wasn't part of the original. We didn't have that. And so it almost ups the stakes even more. 
My name is Kyle Hanagami, and I'm the choreographer for Mean Girls Musical. I was told that the directors uh, had put me in their original pitch for the movie. Um, I had never met Art and Sam before, um, but they said that they had been fans of my work for a very long time. And so I met with them and the producers and Tina and Jeff and people at Paramount and uh, they brought me onto the project. It's, I mean, it's Mean Girls. Like I was so excited to be a part of this one. Mean Girls is definitely a cult classic. Like it's just, it was kind of the first of its kind to speak to a new generation. And so in creating this movie, we're kind of keeping that in mind and making sure that we aren't trying to remake the old one. We are trying to create something that speaks to a whole new generation that can be appreciated by both the new generation and the original fans of Mean Girls. It's been equally creative and choreography because I feel like when most people think choreographer, all they think are dance moves. And there's so much creative and planning that goes, behind, goes on behind the scenes. Renee Rapp is a superstar. She is so awesome to work with. She is such a professional. She is, uh, she gives it everything that she has and she's such a great actress as well. When I was approached about this movie, I was very apprehensive because I was like, it's Mean Girls. Like, how do you touch Mean Girls? It's iconic. Like, and after I read the script, I was sold because what really, hit me was like, I'm such a fan of the original that it felt like I was getting to watch an alternate universe's like version of it where it's like the jokes are different and there's now music and it's played by different people who have different delivery. And so if you go in trying to compare this to the original, it's just, it's kind of apples and oranges. Like this is its own thing and it's its own comedy and it's its own tone and character plots and story developments and all of these things that just are different. Social media is a big part of it and as it is a big part of high school. So, um, and I think Tina did a really good job on that. And the music gives it a whole other edge too. Uh, but the characters remain what they were. You know, Regina's Regina, and uh, and Katie's Katie, and uh, the rest kind of uh, fall in, but they're they're interpreted differently. So they're because it's another time. The look of the kids was completely different, and the generational thing was completely different, and obviously way more diverse, and and it it, it had to look like today. And I think the directors did a great job on that because it does. Well, I've known her a long time, and we, you know, uh, obviously we did this movie together, and I think uh, we've done a couple of other movies together. So uh, we were together, I don't know how many years it is now, but it is, it's definitely over 20. So, uh, you know, and when she arrived, um, she was a girl. <laughs> and, uh, but a girl who was, you know, bright and smart and uh, and really funny and strong, all the things that I think are now evident to everyone. Their background is mostly music videos and uh, I think, and which you can comfortably see on your phone. So when you're jumping to a different scale of a movie, you sort of see close-ups are different. You know, they're, they're absolutely necessary in a music video, but they have a whole other meaning in a movie. And, uh, watching them adapt to that and figure that out was, was great, but they knew what they wanted to do. Jeff and Tina uh, knew very much what they wanted to do as well, and I think Renee had done the show on Broadway, so she already knew it, and I think more and more it just turned, you know, it fell into an ensemble of, of people who sort of both had grown up with the movie, had their, how they wanted to do it, and because they were the appropriate age. And so they, there was no attempt to try and go back to the way it looked or what it did. And I think Art and Sam played a big part in that. Tim was at SNL, I think, for 25 years. And he was a Sam, huge, huge fan. Yeah. And I think he 
he and Tina have a real nice chemistry, uh, which they had in the original, but now it has another kind of level to it. The dance is designed for the movie and it's designed for TikTok, so that you, you sort of feel uh, that, that that's probably how it'll be consumed and, uh, and also that's how it will spread. So I, I think it feels of the moment because dance exists on TikTok, it's copied in life. I think they'll love the cast. I think they'll like the fact that it's familiar but different. Uh, I think the singing takes it to another level. And since Renee is, is also famous as a singer, uh, it takes it, you know, you're happy to see the two merge. And she's so talented. <laughs> My name is Renee Rapp, and I play Regina George. I think it's like the perfect time for a movie like this to come back in a, in a new way, with like a new life. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was such a big deal. And it remains such a big deal, which I think is like a huge testament to like how well done the film was. Um, that like 20 years later, it's just as popping as it was when it came out when I was a kid. I was so excited. I was so excited. And I felt like excited to be able to like do that role again because I think it's seldom do you get to like revisit things and I also get to revisit it in a different medium, right? Like I think doing it on stage is its own beast, but like I really love acting on camera now and that was something I hadn't done ever before when I was doing it on Broadway. So it was exciting to feel like I could do that. You don't like say like mean girls and like no one knows what you're talking about. Do you know what I mean? So I think like there's an incredibly high standard already on the project based on how massive it was and also like the level of work and talent and like skill that went into making something like that um, and having it, you know, have the longevity that it does. Regina is like the HBIC, uh, which is head bitch in charge. She's like really sexy and like bitchy and like has a bite but is also really endearing and like you're kind of obsessed with her but you're like this woman is like so mean. The best thing about her is that like this is a villain who you're forced to like, who you're forced to like and I think like as an actor that's a really difficult uh, kind of you know thing to balance because obviously like you know, calling someone a bitch in an endearing way takes a little bit of skill and finesse. I, however, have quite a bit of practice with that, so um, love playing her, love doing her, love being her. Imagine if you just took like 50 people who are like all very theatrical and artistic in very different ways, but also incredibly similar, and put them in a school in the middle of New Jersey um, with really low ceilings just to flag, um, and we're like, go girls. That's a wild environment. And so we all became so close in like such a witty way of like, I'm not sure that we really bonded over anything that had anything to do with our lives. I think we're all just like, we're in New Jersey. So we all had, we all had a lot of fun and, and they were really, really fun to work with. And Gallery is like a tiny little cute little grandma. Um, like she knits and like reads books. She's just the cutest and is one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And I can always tell that I really love someone if I like meet them and I'm immediately like, my friends would like you. Cause I have very judgmental friends. Um, are all theater kids. And uh, I immediately was like, everyone's gonna love in gallery. Regina sees Katie as like a threat and also sees her as like not a threat. And I think Feeling those ways at the exact same time is very um, confusing and like there's a lot going on so it's like a battle of like ego and insecurity like going crazy which become the same thing kind of inherently are the same thing. Ali'i is so cool. I mean she's she's the coolest. She's also I think like something I really one of her most admirable qualities to me as a human being is like she is really herself she is really herself and like I mean that in a very complimentary way she knows who she is she knows what she wants and she knows that she's there to do her job and also like she is resilient as hell Jaquel is 
one of the most talented people on the face of the earth. He is so funny. It's, like, not even... Like, you can't be, like, taught to be that funny. Like, that's actually just something you're born with. He's the sweetest thing ever. Um, Is, like, just like a little flower. Like, is perfect. And also is hilarious and is one of the best singers ever. (laughs) I love Tina. She is so brilliant in an almost unassuming way. In a way that, like, I remember, like, meeting her for the first time and, like, you, like, you know, obviously, like, see how hilarious someone is and then you, like, listen to them talk and they're, like, this, like, intellectual, like, really, like, introspective I don't know, we're like reflective person, and you're like, oh, wow. And I was like, oh, you're really smart. And she has taught me that like comedians are some of the most brilliant people in the world, second to theater kids, but um, she is awesome. Working together on the film was a much more in depth kind of nature, but I've always felt very looked after by her, and she's always made that really apparent, so, like me and even like my parents. Like she takes care of me, um, and she has since I was a teenager. Um, and has always been, like, a champion of, of mine. Therefore, like, I'm always going to be a champion of hers. It's Mean Girls. It's hot. It's sexy. We care so much, and we care about what we do. And so we put our best foot forward, just as Tina and Jeff and Eric and Micah and every single person did who worked on the project, to make it the best version of what it could be. So it's a must-see because we're all very hot, and we're all very enticing, and the movie is good. I'm Samantha Jane. And I'm Arturo Perez. And uh, we're the directors of Mean Girls. Mean Girls. I'm a massive fan of the original. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I grew up knowing every word. It was huge in high school when it came out. So my friends and I would just be repeating every single phrase from it, like, just in its own language. You know, you can just (laughs) speak Mean Girls. So I was unbelievably thrilled when this opportunity came around. These are high school girls, you know, they're experiencing these big emotions, oftentimes for the very first time, so to be able to explore that, dive deeper, and explore that cinematically is a really cool thing. I mean, the original has such a good message of women should support other women, You know, we shouldn't bully each other. We shouldn't tear each other down. And I I mean, that message is is great 20 years ago. It's great 100 years ago. It's great 100 years from now. You know, it's a message that's always important to talk about. So I, I feel like if we can create a version now that connects to today's audience and kind of allow them to have a good time, you know, because it's about having a good time and having that message be kind of like the medicine so it's like the spoon of sugar that helps the medicine go down it feels like we're we're doing what we're supposed to do and i think that what we we've done 20 years later is is kind of like i think it's it, it is a new twist the first thing that we did was just meet with tina in person and um you know to to collaborate with tina is a lesson in how someone should collaborate she takes the best of everybody's ideas with her own and make something new. The idea could come from anywhere. It doesn't matter who. Mm -hmm. It's like just the best idea wins. And that's infectious, you know, and it really helps, like, the project. The fact that she's able to be so open and warm and such such a great collaborator and open to collaboration when this has been her baby for, you know, over 20 years. Yeah. You know, it's it was really astounding and it was it was really humbling to be able to work with somebody like that. It was really beautiful just to see the cast gel so well together. I mean, they, this cast is amazing. They became friends, you know. They they became true friends, and it was so cool just to see them hanging out. Like yeah. I kind of there there were there were moments where I would kind of step back out of the. I'd be like <laughs> feeling like I was in high school, just hanging out at the table with them, and it was just like they so, were laughing all the yeah, time. Yeah, they were just laughing and joking around, and it was just so natural. For the plastics, we have Renee Rapp as Regina. Um, she 
is first of all a phenomenal, fierce, fierce phenomenal <laughs> talent. I mean, incredible singer. She played Regina on Broadway. Uh, so she's been living with this character for so long. I think in our first conversations with her, we were really talking about almost an unlearning of the Broadway version and what she would bring to to screen. Because, I mean, there's so much more subtlety and groundedness. So I think she was really excited to bring her truest Regina to uh, to screen. It's a good time. It is a good time. I mean, it is a really good time. It's like the perfect time, you know, to go out with your friends, br go bring your mom, you know. It, it, it feels like a really nice mother-daughter movie. It feels like a good friend group movie, a, a good best friend movie to go see, you know. Um, even if you drag your boyfriend, I'm sure he'll enjoy it. We talk about this, like, immersive world with Katie, but I think in order to fully experience it, like, there's no better way than seeing it on the big screen, you yeah. know. You feel fully enveloped in the story. You're able to travel through with her. You're able to feel how she feels. And if you're able to just sit with it and just kind of lose yourself in this story, then you'll get the most out of it. In 2004, we made the original movie, and then sometime around 2017, 18, we made the musical, the Broadway version of the musical of Mean Girls, and then the national tour has been out on the road, and now we are working on the Mean Girls movie. Now we're here making the film version, um, and the idea of taking the Broadway show to the film version um, was exciting to me because it felt like we could kind of have the best of both worlds. We could have this great music uh, while still being able to kind of live with our characters in a close-up, to be able to have new jokes and um, uh, new moments that are surprising to people. Um, I think that over the years I've realized that these characters <clears throat> and this story uh, have had a much longer shelf life than anyone uh, could have anticipated. And so to get to do something new with them, I think, I think people would be surprised. The main thing that was important to me this time in doing it for the screen was to um, find ways for it to be new and surprising to people. And I think the casting um, lends to that tremendously. I think these actors are incredibly perfect in their roles and very kind of modern take on these parts. Bringing together cast of actors is one of my favorite parts of the process, whether it's in film, television, stage. I, I love getting a chance to be a part of it, and I'm so thrilled about this cast that have come together. And Gowrie Rice plays Katie, um, and Gowrie is a very, very smart, talented Australian actress that people will know from many things. She had that kind of deep intelligence that Katie needs to have. Katie, Katie needs to be very smart, and Gowrie really just delivers that and has great timing and is just kind of radiant on screen. So that's our Katie. Bibi Wood is Gretchen and uh, Bibi, her tape just left off the screen when she auditioned for the movie. It just was immediate to me and to Lauren Michaels. We were like, well, there's Gretchen. That's our Gretchen. Gretchen also has to be very intelligent but have this kind of core of fragility that still has to be comic and Bibi just understood that from jump. Avantika plays um, Karen, and similarly, we were like, there's Karen. Just the moment we saw her tape, she is stunningly beautiful. She has this kind of innocent, kind core that Karen kind of needs to have, and she, she has that warmth. Jacqueline Spivey is playing Damien. Uh, I had seen Jacqueline in Strange Loop on Broadway and immediately thought, like, this guy's incredible. He's carrying this whole show. It will be a surprise to no one that he's incredibly talented and hilarious and also has that kind of the warmth underneath uh, Damien that you hope for him to have. Damien really does care about his friend Janice. He, he cares about his friend Katie. And so, yeah, Jacqueline's amazing. Ali Cravalo is playing Janice, uh, and she... It's awesome. She is also one of the most, I don't know if you say telegenic, if it's for film, she's cinegenic, but she is one of the most beautiful actors on screen. Her face is just, you could just watch dailies of her for hours. Um, and she brings the kind of 
uh, fierceness that, that Janice needs to have, the underpinning of, of resentment of what's been done to her in the past. Uh, and you, I, you, know, you fully believe that she is an artist because Ali is an artist you know, in, her, in her way. Um, and uh, yeah, she's killing it as Janice. The Queen Bee, Regina George, um, is a person that I've had the pleasure of working with in this role before, which is Renee Rapp. And Renee um, did the show on Broadway. I met Renee when she was 19, I think, and we had seen her audition for the Broadway show, and she wasn't sure if she wanted to do Broadway, and Lauren Michaels and I um, basically invited Renee to his office, and we're like, you need to do this. You're, you're, you, you'd be wasting your talent if you don't do a run at this before you launch your music career. And thank goodness she said she would like to, so she did an amazing run on Broadway as Regina George, and then has now launched her incredible music career, which is only gonna continue to explode, I believe. She's uh, already a fan favorite. You know, people love her. They love um, her voice. They love her presence. They love her core self, which uh, her TikTok presence, which I think is good because, you know, Regina has to be a three-dimensional villain. Um, and so you can't, you don't want it to be a two-dimensional person that you hate. And you kind of watch Renee come into these scenes and be scary, but she's also kind of enthralling. And you get the thing of like, I do want her to like me. Does she like I am reprising my role as Ms. Norberry because we thought, well, teachers work for a long time, so it, it might make sense if Tim and I did it. And so I called Tim and I was like, will you do it? I'll do it if you do it. But um, it's been really nice to get to work with Tim again. Art and Sam really talked about the need for the movie to be surprising. And in what ways could it be unexpected, could just literally to surprise the audience who have seen the original movie so many times, um, and they have some incredible ideas of how to do that and how to shoot it that way. They come from music video, so for the ways for the songs to feel dynamic and exciting, um, it's been great to see them um, in their element. When we came time to find uh, Anne Gowrie's mom, in this case, um, uh, I thought, who is the only living, who are the only living actors that my own children care about? And that is anyone affiliated with The Office. <laughs> I did think, like, if I could get Jenna Fisher to play Anne Gowrie's mom, my children will finally respect me. And thankfully, Jenna wanted to do it. Uh, and the other thing that's sort of crazy is I do think that Anne Gowrie and Jenna really look related. They really could be related. And again, you know, um, to take on Anna Gaster's part like that, you need someone who has proper comic timing and also that you have to believe they're intelligent the way Anna is. You have to believe that they are a scientist in the field and I think Jenna pulls that off as well. My friend Busy Phillips um, had the uh, balls of steel that it required to say, yes, I will, I will play Mrs. George. I will follow in Amy Poehler's footsteps and I have Amy's blessing. I was about to do this. We should do that. But I did get Amy to bless the choice. And she was like, I think that's a great choice. And t again, talk about a familial resemblance. I really feel like Busy and Renee Rapp could be related. And the other person that I think is really defining the look of this movie is Kyle Hanagami, our choreographer who's a genius and has um, had such an incredible sense of of using dance to tell the story, of, of finding moments of humor within the numbers, of finding moments uh, that people, maybe people will, will want to try this on TikTok or they will um, think this is like something cool they haven't seen before. Um, he's been just invaluable. I think people are going to love this cast and I hope that people will um, find moments where they're like, oh, I didn't expect that.